Hello target our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and once again it's time for some more orc mode training. Uh, today was chest and back. Uh, we did six sets of each. Um, made a minor change on my last exercise which you guys will see uh, because I wanted to do what? I wanted to make sure I just keep it as a big compound movement. I feel like I'm at a point where things like my arms need more than my chest, chest and back, so I don't mind uh, keeping all my chest and back exercises as compound movements and then doing a lot of isolation on arm day. Um, so I kind of had to pick a third compound to put in and I'll, I'll get to the choice of what I went with and why. Uh, but we started off with uh, flat bench and these reps are right about where I want them so I went ahead and went up 10 pounds. Um, I'd like to be, get to where I can do my top sets with 315 but I've never done more than one set of, of heavy 315 ever in a workout. Um, and it seems like I don't have many rep difference between 275 and 315, uh, but I don't think I could hit two sets of five with it. So I'm just going to ramp up and do hard, challenging sets and build my way back up to that um, as I work on getting leaner. All right, uh, and I'm keeping everything, all my big movements, I want to keep them in around the five to eight rep range right now. So in the smaller movements, you know, closer to eight to 12. And some stuff will go a little higher. But again, I'm trying to keep jump volume down and just get right to effective reps and everything with good form, uh, good stretches at the bottom, everything controlled. So obviously, like, like even this benching, we're, we're benching super wide. Um, so my index fingers are on the rings. We're doing it flat back. Uh, we're doing it pause. Uh, so I got sixes with 285 doing that. And, and again, always the reminder here is that uh, when this comes up, people are like, well, you've lifted more. I've lifted more with a bit closer of a grip with an arch, with wrist wraps, everything else. A little bit different of a beast. Uh, I'm doing this to build my chest, right? And that's the goal. Uh, Pull-ups uh, with the 45, I can only get sets of five. Um, so I went for a six rep each time we couldn't get it out of the bottom. Uh, keeping in mind, most of these are going to a full stretch with just a brief pause at the bottom. So I'm not even using a stretch reflex. Trying to make sure I'm really just stretching those lats as hard as possible at the bottom because that's what builds uh, lats, okay? So when people look at a lot of these pull-ups, they misunderstand how to build lats and they do stuff in a way that, uh, you know, just my opinion is not going to give them the biggest, the widest back possible. Uh, so I don't know why they're doing pull-ups. All right, for my second exercises, I went with incline bench at a 45 degree. God, it went up just a little bit on these today. Um, last time I got a six and then on the second set I had to grind through five. I managed to get six on both. Maybe I could have got another rep, but I decided that, look, we're making progress again here now that we've added it back in. It's better than last week. Let's just keep it there. Nice, hard quality sets. Um, and I grip these a little narrower. And the reason, even though I really like that real wide grip on the flat bench, I struggle to touch my chest with the, with the wide grip on this. Uh, just worth noting, I, I don't actually have the chest flexibility to touch the bar to my chest. So sometimes it's an issue of finding the grip that lets me do that. Instead of using that other belt, I decided to just turn this one sideways. People always ask, you know, why does that, that stick out that way? Uh, because it won't tuck in. With this really thick uh, 13 millimeter belt, it won't tuck in. Um, so for the rows today, instead of the right overhand grip I did last time, I'm like, well, let's just do these with an underhand grip, kind of the GH row style, but we'll keep it really, really strict, right? No cheating. And of course, it means I'm not as strong on these as I was when I was using a little body English, but they feel really good. Uh, so the reason I'm doing the underhand grip, I, I don't know. I just, I really feel my lats effectively when I do that. Yes, it works in bicep also, um, but I feel my lats a little more when I go with the underhand grip. Overhand grip is a little more upper back, but I'm also doing dumbbell rows and I'm also doing uh, shoulder work on shoulder day. So um, again, if I can just get a little more back out of it, probably worth it. Plus the upside, it is probably hitting a little bit of uh, bicep. You know, and granted my biceps have three different types of curls on bicep day, but uh, again, again, it's only two sets of each. So it, it's probably not a big deal. So doing some of this stuff will probably ensure that, uh, you know, my arms technically really end up with two days, even though one day it's hitting heads of the muscles that aren't getting hit here. Again, arms being my priority. There's a reason I have an arm day, literally a whole day to arms, because my arms are my weakest body part. Uh, so again, just thinking in those terms. But yeah, these feel good. I like them this way. Uh, 
but again, notice how strict I'm going on this. You know, you guys have seen me do more reps with these cheating a little bit with up to 245. 205 doing strict, these are failure. So notice I hit failure on all the back stuff. All right, I went to do a rep and it wouldn't come up. It's muscle failure. Whereas in a lot of the, the pressing, we're kind of grinding the last rep. We're doing about zero reps in reserve. I didn't do any rest pause today because I went up in weight and I gained another rep on the incline. All right, reverse grip bench. These look a little sloppy. I think my strength will go up quick on these. Um, I was going to do decline. I was really going to do quick decline. I went to set it up. It was just the empty bar. And I'm like, this feels uncomfortable. Keep in mind, I have Meniere's disease. I don't like being that upside down feeling. It just felt too uncomfortable. I'm like, look, let's get a third angle. I haven't done reverse grip bench in years. I used to be pretty strong at this, and I haven't done it in many years. I'm like, let's get over and just mess with some reverse grip. Let's do it as a third exercise. It will hit the chest from a completely different angle, different stretch, and sure enough, it felt very, very different. Okay, but again, this gives us a completely different angle. So when we're doing with these three exercises, we're making sure that even though we're doing a you know press and a pull, they all work angles quite a bit differently because we have a wide grip flat bench, then we have the incline, then we're doing that reverse grip, which feels vastly different than the other other flat bench. Uh, so again, a little bit of, of bias towards upper chest because some experts and, and even some researchers feel like the reverse grip may be a phenomenal upper chest exercise. So I would say all in all, we do have a little bias towards the upper chest. Uh, final back exercise after after the underhand group rows we just do our dumbbell rows um, these are a little bit lighter relative to the others that are getting sets of eight on this failing on uh, the weak arm so what i do on on these i allow the weak arm to determine the strength just like when i do the one arm preacher curls right we lead with the left side and whatever reaches failure that's it the, that side reaches failure, we just do the same number of reps with the other arm. Uh, the second set of reverse grip looked a little cleaner, so this lets me know that as soon as I get used to this lift, I'll probably be able to hopefully load it up and keep it getting stronger. Uh, now granted, I've done incline and other stuff first, but my strength really shouldn't be down, because keep in mind, we're only doing two sets of everything, two really hard sets. So really five or six sets for chest. My chest shouldn't be that fatigued. So uh, again, I'll, I'll get used to these, uh, we'll bring it up. The main thing though is that racking and unracking. You have to get really far under it. And you just have to be aware of not hitting your head when you come back out. Because you, you, again, you have to get very far under it. But it also pressed the bar path is way lower anyways. Usually you're almost touching the stomach and it never goes even past the nipple on the way up. So you can get pretty far under those uprights. Uh, again, safety, safety, safety on that exercise. But I have bars to stop it. Plus, I'm so far under there that even if it could get to my, my neck, it can't because the, the uprights are in the way. But again, I have the safety arm set to catch it. And then we finish up with uh, another set of dumbbell rows to failure. Uh, pretty happy with the workout today. Uh, the lifts were, were a hair heavier or more reps than last time. Uh, you know, at least on the chest work, the back work, not so much. So again, just kind of straight sets following progressive overload here. So I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys and gals next time.